Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of TU News, the show that tells you everything you need to know about Teesside University. I'm Jamie Crow. And I'm Alice Hawley and coming up on today's show. We take a look at the Anne Frank exhibition. Counting down to the general election in May next year, we'll hear from our Labour and University Welfare representative about their plans. And finally, we visit a youth group in Redcar working to keep teenagers safe from harm. Welcome to TU News, our top story. Last week saw Teesside University host events to commemorate Holocaust Memorial Day. January 27, 1945, the day when Auschwitz concentration camp was liberated by the Russian army. Auschwitz has long been a symbol of the atrocities of the Holocaust and Nazi Germany. A group of Teesside University history students were given the chance to visit the site and talk about their experiences. I went along to find out more. It's been 69 years since the Russians first led the march into Auschwitz and the horrors within were first discovered. Six million starving men, women and children all murdered in the gas chambers of this killing factory. And for these history students who got to witness the aftermath of these shocking events, it has changed the way they think forever. After returning home, they had the chance to share their experiences on Holocaust Memorial Day. Teesside Centuria Building held host to a day of lectures and services on remembering those who lost their lives to the extreme brutality of the Nazi forces. You can't really put it into words when you're there, but when you're back, it's, it's just shocking. I think that's the only way, how someone can do that to people, so many people, it's, it's ridiculous. For some, the experience has changed the way that they act in their everyday lives. It's sort of taken for granted, I suppose. You, you realise, you know, you see things on the telly about it, like, especially days like the day, and then you remember what you've seen, and you relate, you know, you can't, you can't compare the trustees, you know, what they experience. And for one historian, it was a day of remembrance and liberation as he shared his knowledge with the younger audience. I think, I think today is very important, not only for remembering the six million Jews that died in the Holocaust, and the other people like gypsies that were killed as well and other undesirable groups. I think it's important that we remember those, but also it's equally important that we learn from those mistakes and we ensure that it never happens again. Holocaust Memorial Day may only be one day every year, but for these young people, it's something they will always carry with them from now on. Thanks to Jamie Crow for that report. Now, Anne Frank is a name synonymous with the Holocaust, and as part of Holocaust Memorial Week, an exhibition opened at Teesside University's Constantine Gallery. Created by Anne Frank House in Amsterdam, the exhibition is open until the 14th of February, and I went along to find out more. Anne Frank has come to symbolise the human tragedy of the Holocaust. And here, in the Constantine Gallery, the life of this key figure in history is revealed. Which is sort of commemorating Holocaust Memorial Day, but it also teaches, well, I've had a lot of children named teaching about the life of Anne Frank, but also covers um, situations in Germany during the second one, lead up to the second one, and the Holocaust. A present for her 13th birthday, the diary records how she lived in a secret annex with two other families, until they were captured by the Nazis in 1941. The Frank family was helped by Meeps, who discovered the diary shortly after their arrest. And that was a terrible, a terrible sight what we saw there. All the papers on the ground, all the chairs on the ground, all the, the, the custer, all the cupboards were open. It was it was a chaos, and we are looking. Ellie, me, my husband, and then we saw the diary from Anne Frank. Anne Frank died one month before the liberation of Auschwitz in March 1945. But why is this? Girl I think she's very relatable. I think. If you look at the children, there's a lot of them being the same age or they like the same things because we say how she likes cinema, she likes theatre, she likes royal family, she likes music, she likes boys and all these children do and it's sort of a story of someone just like them and what happened to a society that isn't too dissimilar from their own. Her father Otto was the only member of the family to survive the Holocaust. He published his daughter's diary in 1947 
and turned his daughter into the famous writer she always wanted to be. But why is it so important we remember events of over 70 years ago? I think it's really good that we've actually recognised it here and we're trying to teach not only the students but the public and we're trying to involve everyone in kind of remembering the spirit of the Holocaust and remembering why it should never happen again. Next May sees a return to the polls to elect who will govern Britain. Plans are already in place to draw up the political manifestos for the main political parties. To discuss this issue, I'm joined by Jordan Bly, the chairman of Teesside University's Labour Society, uh, James Carroll, the university welfare representative, and from the Christian Union, Lewis Medley. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today, guys. Um, unfortunately, no one from the Conservative branch could join us, but we came to carry on regardless. So we've just seen a couple of movies there from the um, Holocaust Memorial Days. Uh, do you, What I want to know from you is, is, do you think it's a good idea for young people to get these experiences and to go away on excursions? John? Um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's an important thing to remember. I mean, it is probably the most, you know, uh, greatest act of barbarity ever in history. So I think it's important that nobody should ever forget that. And I think young people are... Uh, especially crucial to, forget, uh, to remember that as well and should never forget it. And do you think it was a good idea for when Hol for Holocaust Memorial Day to take place last week? There was a number of guest speakers that came mm -hmm. in, uh, spoke to some of the students, some of the students from who went to Poland got to share their own experiences. Yeah, yeah, I think that's very important. I think first-hand experiences are probably the most valuable. And what about you, Lewis? What about the moral implications? Um, yeah, I think it's good that we kind of keep being taught about it and get reminded of it because if we kind of start forgetting that it happened or we ignore that it did then we don't learn from it and that we can sort of look back at it and go these are the reasons it happened so let's try and find a way of making sure it doesn't happen again. And you of course being from the Christian Union you know do you obviously learn some of these morals yourself? Um, well the Bible is pretty clear that killing people is a bad idea so <laughs> <laughs> I guess um, that's the biggest one of it. <laughs> Do you think the joining society or, or a union is, is a good way to get young people involved? Yeah, yeah, I think it's very important. It you know, provides a, an area for young people to get involved and whilst at university use their spare time and meet like-minded people. As well, do a lot of, of voluntary work, don't you? So, mm. you can give us any examples? Uh, Labour Society, just before Christmas, we ran a event to raise money for Middlesbrough Food Bank. Uh, we decided we just didn't like the idea of anyone in our hometown going uh, hungry at Christmas, so we did a raffle, we raised about 66 quid. We did that just in an afternoon, really, so, you know, it was people were very generous and we were very, you know, we were kind of amazed by just how much support we got. And uh, in March, we're planning an event for the charity Mind, a uh, Happy Monday event to try and raise money for them as well. And James, you've obviously done a lot of stuff on mental health awareness yes. uh, that's been going on. Uh, yeah, we've done a lot of uh, charity um, fundraisers for Mind. Uh, mm. We've um, tried to kill the stigma of mental health around campus. We've raised about 1,300 for Mind in November. Now, obviously, one of the biggest issues that's going to be coming up for students next year is the 2015 general election. Mm. Um, like I said, for a lot of students, it will be their first time to vote, do you think there needs to be an awareness made for that, Jordan? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, I think the world, th there is a sense that the world tends to be run by sort of aging white men and it's important that young people stand up and get themselves into government and vote and make their voice heard because otherwise they're just going to be trampled upon and that's why the likes of Nick Clegg thinks he can get away with travel and tuition fees, why uh, the Tories reckon that they can r cut uh, humanities teaching budgets by 80 percent I only found out about this the other uh, the other week I mean I just looked it up and it's you know staggering that they can get away with this and they reckon they can because a lot of students and a lot of young people are quite apathetic are you not worried at all that the students might just tend to go of what mom and dad say you know what mom and dad would vote for they don't actually have their own political affiliation I disagree with that mm, I do too yeah I think yeah. possibly in about I th about five, ten years ago, that would be. I think students are more savvy now about politics. Do you think it's a good, it's a good system, Lewis? I mean, you've obviously been um, able to vote before. This, this yeah. will be actually your second time. So, yeah, that's a good point. The thing about voting for what your mum and dad vote for isn't necessarily a bad thing, because if your parents are voting for the people that are best going to help out your family, then obviously voting for the same people is going to benefit you as well. So it's not necessarily that you have to vote for someone different, but if people are educated in what each party is doing and wants to do. So that people can make an educated decision in what they elect to vote for. I actually disagree with that a little bit. I think that this, um, the best way I've seen it described is as tribal voting, which is the idea that you do exactly as your family do. So if yeah. your family are all Tories, then you vote Tory as well. 
or Labour, Labour vice, or whatever. Um, and I think it's important that people have their own opinions, they have their own voices, and they make them heard, and they think about things in their own way. Um, I mean, just within my family, there's uh, at least four different political affiliations just within my immediate family that I can think of. Uh, so how do you think the students will break out of that system? Education. <laughs> <laughs> On the sea. Right. Yeah, education. If you're ed educating people about politics, educating people about being a... A, 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 being a citizen really mm. and that's what you need to do and that's how you're going to make people more aware make people more mm. savvy change behaviours and that's all due to the education system one last question off, off each year from left to right one word who do you think is the strongest party at the moment and will win next year Labour so simple Lewis. as that Lewis Labour um, um, I don't know I think it's pretty even but if I, I think if one w could win I think it would probably be Conservatives Based on that, Labour seems to not be doing a great deal at the moment. I assume someone will go to another okay, tab. And thank you very much to our guests there. There was a great range of opinions going on. And now we turn to the issue of teenagers who seem to be getting an increasingly negative press. If you read a story in the newspapers about 13 to 19 year olds, there is a fair chance it will be about homelessness, violent deaths, cyberbullying, or teenage pregnancy. On television, underage drunkenness and promiscuity dominate popular programming. But our reporter, Bryony McStay, discovered there is a d very different story about teenagers at Rye Hill School in Redcar. Over a thousand teenagers study their GCSEs at Rye Hill School, which enjoys specialist sports and drama college status on the northeast coast of England. But when bad behaviour by teenagers began to get out of hand seven years ago, the Friday Night Youth Project was started to keep them off the streets at night. There was a lot of antisocial behaviour on Red Lane and within the area. So the police came in to speak of a deputy head teacher called Sue Rawlinson, who basically came up with the idea. She knew that I got on well with these kids who would be getting in trouble in the area, and there was a list of, I think, eight children. Uh, so she said, would I do something? And it's just sort of, we try, we try and progress it every year, and we try and keep it modern and relevant for the kids. Because obviously what I think would be cool isn't cool for these kids anymore because I'm getting old now. Um, and we're trying to find out, and the kids have a lot of impact and a lot of input into what we buy. So we might do sort of like a survey or questionnaire, what would you prefer out of these things? For a thousand pounds spend, what do you want? So then they come up with the ideas and a lot of them say, I want this, and say, we can't have that at a youth club because you're not 18. Um, so we're trying to do as many things as possible that they want to do, because it's not for the staff or for parents, for the kids of our school to sort of have a sort of sense of ownership of the school, if that makes sense. So they respect the building, so when they come to school during the week, they've got a level of respect for the staff, the cleaning staff, the kitchen area. They've got a respect for all that because they know that if they don't respect it, they don't get to use it on a Friday night. A gym, craft workshop and games room mean there are plenty on offer to attract teenagers in red car, along with opportunities to develop leadership skills. Um, well, I was doing like, some work with Mr Tunney because I was getting involved in that and then he put me on like a report sort of thing. And then uh, he just asked me if I wanted to start getting involved just to kind of like stop it, you know, and it's never always much in that and give me a bit of responsibility. So then I said, oh yeah, fine, I'll do it. And then I got like Kia and some of the like my mm -hmm. mates involved and then that's how it really started. Mm -hmm. Mr Tunney and like, the other teachers, like, they connected with me more instead of just shouting at me, which you probably should make them worse. You mature, right? Yeah, you do mature because as I know you feel like you you have, because you have more responsibility, you feel like more important. Yeah, I, I'd advise other schools to do it. Yeah, you, it do. does like, there's quite a lot of like the students, like, the younger ones that have got a bit of like, behavioural problems, quite a lot of them come here and you can tell it calms them down, like, you can see them in school, like, or like they, they look forward, they have something to look forward to at the end of the week. Thing, look, if I'm just if I'm just being with her for the week, I've got Friday to let up with energy or just have a good laugh. Antisocial behaviour in the area has dramatically improved, and the teenagers still love the youth club seven years on, with some Fridays bringing in as many as 300 youngsters in from the cold. That's all from me, Alice Hawley. And I'm Jamie Crow, wishing you goodbye from all the team at TU News. Join us next time for more news from Teesside University. Goodbye. <laughs>